Good afternoon. Welcome to another AMA session or Ask Me Anything. My name is Kanshi Mehta. I'm the moderator of this session. I'm also a member of the Pet Chef, Pet Chef team. This is a partnership with Thinkly. Today we have with us Tara Mehta, who is a clinical psychologist. We also have with us two pet parents, Riddhi Sejpal and Delna Vesavela. Welcome and thank you so much for taking the time out. Happy to be here. Hi. Happy to be here too. Hi. Happy to be here. Yeah. Uh, just to, to a trigger warning to all our audiences, our topic today is sensitive and heavy, but for, uh, for certainly it's an important conversation to have. So let's begin. Um, Tara, we consider our pets special beings in our lives. Now, how does losing our beloved pets affect our mental health? So before I answer that question directly, I think I want to cover a few points on what just is grief um, mm -hmm. and how can people identify grief for themselves, right? So when you talk about, you know, pets being so important to you when they're almost like members of your family, it's only natural that you don't consider them as just a pet. And they play such a crucial role in all our lives, whether it is, you know, just a companion for the children or a companion for the elderly. Sometimes they give you a day structure, you know, you get up and, and you have the first thing is I've got to take my dog for a walk. So, you know, there's almost like a routine for the day. Um, there are times that they, you know, are there and they help you emotionally through the low phases of your life. They're there, you know, to give you tons of joy. So I just feel that they have, they're such a part and parcel of our life that they are almost such a precious thing for us. So when we talk about experiencing grief, it's only natural to feel that sense of grief when you lose um, a pet that's so close to you. And that in experience of grief is very individual for every person. So there is no right or wrong way to grieve. It's just a very personal experience. And there are lots of factors which go into experiencing that grief. For example, what is the age of the person experiencing grief? So for example, children experience grief a lot faster and they overcome it faster as compared to maybe let's say an elderly person whose sole companion was the the pet mm -hmm. right or for example sometimes it's also the age of the pet if you got you know 14 13 14 years depending upon the lifespan of your pet you suddenly feel okay at least I when my pet had a full life I got you know as much time with my pet as possible and it's easier somehow to deal with that grief than if suddenly losing a pet to maybe an accident or an illness right it also depends upon the personality of every people there are some people who cope with life's challenges easily and there's some who tend to struggle a little bit so all these play a role in how you would handle losing a pet right mm -hmm. now grief also whether it's for a person or whether it's for a pet uh, the stages of grief tend to be the same right and I'll just quickly gloss over them so that you know everybody knows what to look out for so first it's usually denial where you don't want to accept that you know you've lost your pet or a loved one and you know you're resisting the idea that they are no longer there then it's anger you know why them why did I have to lose my pet or my family member why did it have to be them you know then you go through this phase of you're just upset and angry with everybody then there's this feeling of guilt okay maybe I should have done more maybe Maybe I could have gone maybe to the doctor earlier. I could have seen the symptoms earlier. There's always like a guilt phase, you know. Then you go through a depressive phase where, you know, you're just feeling so low that the person you love is no longer there or the pet you love is no longer there. And finally, there's the acceptance phase where you've accepted that, you know, the, the, the your pet is no longer around. But in this it all doesn't come together. Sometimes there are days that are worse. Sometimes there are days that are better. It ebbs and flows. You know, there isn't a steady stream of I'm constantly low every day. And you'll find that there are times of coping well, but let's say your pet's birthday comes and you tend to again feel low. So be prepared. It's normal to experience an up and down when it comes to grief. It's not consistent. It's not linear. It comes and goes. It's very individualistic. There's some people who are able to recover from their grief in a few weeks. Some take months, some take years. Usually when we talk about grief, um, you know, in terms of losing a loved one, it's usually one entire year cycle until you reach either their death anniversary all over again, right? So 
it's very individual again there's no right or wrong it's very important to express your grief um keeping it held within you is never helpful because it leads to other secondary psychological problems so never hold in your grief it's very important to talk about it discuss it share it or at least be open to feel about it right so we talk about how does it affect mental health i think the one of the the two or three direct impact it will have is one on your mood so very often we have sim- mild symptoms uh, of uh, of depression or of anxiety so you could be let's say sad mood lack of interest in activities you have low energy you're lethargic you know you could have disturbed sleep you could have disturbed appetite lots of negative thoughts lots of feelings of guilt uh, for some people feelings of self harm when it comes to anxiety you could have palpitations nervousness just having a sense of dread uh, they could be you know m- maybe if your pet sort of helped you go place to place suddenly you know the social isolation i don't want to step out i don't want to meet anyone you know or if it is a really traumatic incident that you have had which may have led to you losing your pet there's a lot of ptsd symptoms right so those are the major uh, mental health concerns that we would see but on a minor level there would be essentially changes in mood changes in daily routine changes in appetite changes in sleep and changes in how much you would want to then interact with people around you absolutely right um the reason why i actually picked up this topic today is that um a lot of people i remember a lot of people coming up to me when my dog passed away saying that but he was just a dog why so much grief i just want people to understand the impact of pets in our lives and this is the impact that they do have so then go then my next question now what are the ways to cope what what can we do to i know i know grief comes uh, the grief comes in waves it ebbs like you just said it ebbs and goes it's a journey so what can we do what can we do to help along with the journey right i think the first thing would be to try and get back into your regular routine minus what you mm-hmm. perhaps would do you know with your pet but getting some sense of normalcy back i can understand everybody taking a couple of days off for feeling you know really low and going through the process but sooner than later and there's no time phase for that but sooner than later coming back to just regular routine is important right mm-hmm. because that just provides you nothing else a distraction from constantly thinking about this so it's just regular routine that you go through that's something that's very important secondly it's very important to talk about the way you feel so even with um you know patients losing loved ones or ptsd people we always say you know there are always groups uh, support groups so which talk about you know going through the loss of a loved one how to cope with the loss that you've been through similarly i feel that reach out to people you know who have pets and perhaps you've known friends or family who've lost pets and just share the way you feel because there's an instant connection because those are the best people who understand what you're going through someone who doesn't have a pet might sympathize with you uh, that you're going through a tough time but they'll never be able to empathize because they don't know what that feels like right Correct. so reaching out to people who've had similar experiences and sharing the way you feel is something that's um, very important to help in the grieving process then i also feel that um, you know when we talk about um, the many people who don't want to let go of the feeling and they don't want to move on from where they are at because they feel that oh if i do it i'll forget my pet and you know it's something so precious to me and you know how do i move on so i feel that sometimes you know one would recommend that you know just sit down and we have something called the empty chair technique that we use with with everyone else as well that just imagine that your pet is in front of you and what are the things that you would like to share with your pet maybe there are some people who just you know live alone and just talk to their pet about how their day went or who they met you know and it's just sometimes just sit and go through that activity sometimes you might say okay you know what if you had to tell your pet something and you know you you felt you missed out on letting them know how you felt before they passed away write it down either keep it with you or you know later you can throw it away but you know just write it down and sort of almost get it out of your system to feel that i've managed to share it right i think that's an important thing that one could do um i think that small small things can be kept in mind maybe you don't 
uh, you know, maybe you want to keep a, a few photographs of your pets around to feel that they are still there. Uh, maybe you just want to have some sort of a routine where on their birthday you still remember them, but in a happy way, you know, once you feel you've dealt with your grief. So I think that there's small, small things that you can do. Getting back to routine again is very important. And when and depend on which part of phase of your grief you are in. When you're reaching the acceptance phase, then you also realize that let me focus on what are the positives of having the pet and not just the negative of the pet not being there. So let me instead choose to remember all the good moments and not just focus on the loss of not having that pet around. Some of it, uh, some of it I still do today. We, I keep pictures, a lot of pictures. And um, it's been 15 years, but I still feel like Rufus would at any moment just walk across from me. So there's, it, 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 it lingers. It does. The other thing, that is the other thing that, that was very important to me because now I have a new dog. Um, he's two years old now. And I have a four-year-old child. Now, something happens. Now, how do I explain to children and help them cope? So I think that um, when it comes to children, it's important to make them a part of the process. I think very often we want to try and, uh, you know, bubble wrap our children, not expose them to this concept of death. Um, and, we want, and we feel we're being protective um, for them. And it's coming from that sense. Um, but I think because it almost becomes for very for many children the first experience of death um, mm -hmm. i think it's important to help them understand what is happening perhaps in simpler terms depending upon the age of the child um, and not lie to them because i think very often you know mm -hmm. one would be tempted to say oh you know the pet ran away the pet went to sleep or you know something along those lines and I think it leaves the child very sort of confused. It also makes them very anxious that it, it could happen to the next pet, the next family member, because they haven't understood what you're trying to convey. And I think it's important to, in simplified language, help them understand that, you know, the pet is unwell and they're not going to stay with us for much longer. And I know it makes us sad and I know it's not a pleasant experience it is going to happen let's let's make the most of the days that we have remaining with our pet and what happens is that not only does a child in their capacity start to understand that this is a natural phenomenon of life but mm -hmm. by being open about it um, they are also one understanding they're also emotionally growing they also don't feel betrayed later on when they realize that you may have lied to them because some friend may mention it in school and then they feel that you're not being truthful to them and I think that in this process if as parents you are open with your grief and displaying your emotions it helps them understand that it's okay for them to also grieve if they see you not grieving at all or because you're choosing to uh, not display it in front of them mm -hmm. then they don't also know how to express their grief Right. So it's important that as adults, you also express your grief. And if you're crying, you're crying. And if you're feeling sad and you're feeling low, explain to them why you're feeling that way. So it gives them a chance also to realize if I was to express myself this way, that it's perfectly fine, you know. And you can reassure your child that, you know, uh, maybe there was an injury, maybe there was ill health. And that's why, you know, uh, you lost your pet and helping them understand, even if it's little children in their capacity, it makes them feel that they're part of the process. And you mm -hmm. have sort of excluded them, you know, through this because you want to protect them from experiencing death at a young age. So I think that one is involve them in the process, even if it is. You know, times where you feel that, you know, your pet is really unwell and your vet recommends putting them down. I think talk to them about it. Say, you know, the, my, the pet is in so much pain or discomfort. And, you know, the best thing would be to help them uh, this way and come and you know, let's spend the last few hours or days, you know, doing all the things that we love. So I think if you involve them in the process, they're also prepared for what is mm -hmm. to come, rather than suddenly one day seeing a pet and the next day not seeing the pet at all. So I think that if you involve them in the process again, age-dependent exposure, um, I think that it is important for them to see it, right? Even if it means they're going to go bury your dog, 
take your child with you let them see that this is the end it also gives them closure then suddenly not experiencing it at all right again i'm saying age dependent right if you yeah. think your child is ready for it um so maybe a 4 year old is not but maybe an 8 year old is so um i it the age dependent definitely and at your discretion but i feel that if a child gets closure uh, a child is able to deal with grief better just like adults are as well so i think those are the couple of things and always keep communication open right let them know it's okay if you know through the course of the next few weeks so months they remember and they feel sad it's all right to come and talk to you about it also be prepared for sometimes difficult behavior which there is no justification for um and there are temper tantrums or there are behavioral problems you know they're stemming from a place where they're unable to express the connection between losing a pet and suddenly feeling insecure feeling clingy to you not wanting to let mm-hmm. you go or you know suddenly having doubts about you know things they were confident in but now they are not it's a phase it will pass as long as you keep communication going as long as you also understand that it's their journey as well correct and it's their first experience so you know if, and no two child children are the same so expect that you know maybe both children respond differently and that's fine so there's a reason why i called delna and reddy to this conversation both have lost pets recently and i thought that maybe sharing their story would probably give people oh probably will uh, help people deal better with the loss of the pet um you'd start with delna delna can you tell us your story hi hi everyone hi tara hey, thank hey. you for all of that actually it's it's nice to hear it from a professional and uh, sometimes i feel like the things that we do is on the right track because um, even though we don't we've not studied it in a in a sense it's a, it's a very internal automatic uh, subconscious feeling and you just feel especially when it comes to your kids and your dog because you just feel like you know what you need to do and how much you need to protect your children but also um i have a son who's 8 years old and oh uh, 7 years old he's turning 8 this year and uh, actually kangshi and my daughter are both 3 uh, so uh, she's she's felt it of course she's felt it but i still think she's in a stage where she's not completely understood the magnitude of it whereas for my son this was his big brother my my dog is his name was hugo he died at age 8 he was a french master um he had a lot of complications in his last year and he was getting these proliferating tumors which weren't getting better so it was just getting worse and worse um, literally every day by the end of it and there was pus and blood all over the house and vets were coming in and out non stop and all of this but through all of this also like you're saying i think for my the most important to me at that point was my son because i know how attached he is to he was to hugo and also more than that it was this whole thing that to me because hugo came first he was always my favorite so even it's like a fight between my husband and both the kids it's always like oh but mummy's favorite is hugo like there's no question about it <laughs> and it's fine you know it's like who do you love more is i love hugo the most so there's no question of anything you know but um I think that for him also he he just like you were saying every child and age dependent copes differently his whole logic moved with the aspect of I don't want to see him lifeless so when when you go actually passed even though we said you know what we will bring him to that situation we need him to get closure as well he just didn't want to see Hugo like that he wanted his last memory of Hugo to be barking jumping dancing like kissing him everything licking him it, he wanted right. that to be his last memory of hugo right. and he didn't have it in him to allow that to change so we did show him and he was in our room unfortunately we had to put him down so in our room he was he was in our room itself we called mikhail a couple of times but he really didn't want to he didn't want to see him like that so fair enough we 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 didn't want to push him and force him at that point honestly we were also grieving to a, to the next level so i can't even explain to you what i was feeling at that point and how i was feeling at or what because right now it seems like a blank also when i'm saying it right now a lot of my mind is blanking out but yeah another thing is for me very very personal because i was listening to all the reasons that you gave earlier as a pet parent i think i don't really fit under any of those i do fit under the categories but i think my biggest thing today is the fact that 
I know that he's not sleeping next to me at night, and for me that is big. And I know it's very childish, but what happens? Just like you know, when when it's light and it's happy and everything outside, you're fine. The moment it starts becomes late evening, children tend to say, "Oh, now now the monster will come out, or the zombie will come out." And you know, it's night time. And I don't know why psychologically how this has affected me, but now it's like if I know that Hugo's not sleeping in my room. I'm not scared of that a monster will come, but it's just that I just feel so incomplete that can't believe I have to sleep today like this. And my husband does travel a lot, so for me that was always my big uh, boosting step in that sense that I knew that he was always there with me. I was never worried because he was sleeping in the room with me, so I'm okay. Even though he's not like crazy every day, I complain that I'm not getting sleep and all of that. But I needed that there, you know. And then suddenly that wasn't there, and for me, I mean, I'm I don't know when I'll get over it. It's like that. It's not even I'm not even one percent over it, so I don't know when I will get over it. But See, yeah, I think, that's. I think everybody, like I said, grief is such a personal process, right? There's no right or wrong. And I think absolutely two points. I think one, it's completely fine if your child was not ready for it. Again, you know, different children respond differently, and I said age also, you know, varies upon how. much you feel you know your child would be ready so i think it's perfectly fine i think having a last happy memory there's nothing wrong with that either right so again yeah, that's yeah. what's the thing and also when you get so used to somebody being years in and year out with you it's only natural to feel that loss and yeah. the thing about routine when i said is that in the day you're busy you're preoccupied your mind is distracted you don't notice it as much but yeah. that right time when everything else slows down it's when you'll but naturally also feel it the most right but do you so, have any do you have any tips in this of of how i can just maybe deal with it better at that point because you know i did speak to somebody but this was more from a spiritual journey rather from rather than from science and uh, i was getting a lot of signs and maybe dreams and feelings and like you know it was all it was it seemed a little bit surreal and um, i just felt like i didn't know whether it was true or no or whether it was just me playing games with my mind or things were actually happening etc but then i did work with it a little bit and work towards the fact of you know what if this is happening i'm going to accept it and i'm going to tell my hugo that i need to sleep at night or i i need to figure this out because my life has to somehow move on and i don't know if it's again like subconsciously just help me or what but i feel like i'm definitely sleeping better i'm okay and and i was I, to be honest my whole life I've, i i've lived abroad for many years i've lived in my own room my whole life i've never been scared of sleeping alone it's just that i got so used to being with him that now suddenly when that went it just always feels like it's incomplete like everything feels incomplete right i one more person I, sorry one more person live is asking pretty much the same question what are the healthy ways to cope with an emo- emotional pain of a pet loss shantanu had asked yeah right so i think one is Uh, so, uh, how how long back did you lose your pet? Uh, we lost him at the end of December. We actually lost him on New Year's. So yeah, didn't okay. start. <laughs> so one is that I think that like I think all grief takes time. Very often we measure it in a one year cycle, right? So when somebody comes for to us as well, and you know for treatment of grief, we usually say it takes a full year's cycle. Um, and having said that, again, you know everybody deals with it differently. One is that it's understandable. that you are going through feeling this sort of void you know in your life at the moment in certain times of the day or the night it's perfectly uh, reasonable i think that maybe starting off some positive um routine especially in the evening uh you know maybe helpful so for example sitting down and like i said just maybe sitting and imagining that he's there and just talking to him maybe a little bit about your day or just remembering you know a couple of positive instances that you had with him thinking uh remembering him but in a more positive light than the fact that he's not there even though you know he's not there and that void is going to exist for a while but changing the narrative in your mind because at the end of the day um we're all concerned and we're all talking over here about how we feel like it's it's about the feeling of being low and the feeling of being sad and the feeling of being miserable and anxious that we want to help cope better with right but at the end of the day all emotions come from thoughts you are thinking negative so you are feeling negative you're thinking happy so you're feeling happy so if you want to control your emotions the only way to control your emotions is to control your thoughts if there is a constant negative narrative happening in your mind um you're going to feel negative 
whether you like yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So sometimes absolutely. it's about uh, it's about just putting a new practice in place of just maybe instead of just remember focusing on him not being there, even though at the back of your mind you know it, but just starting off with more positive affirmations and more positive experiences and just remembering those and maybe just talking to him about even mundane routine stuff because you can't be positive uh, every day. Yeah. Uh, just having routine stuff to talk about, so you know you're remembering him. you're talking to him he's there in your life but it is it's a more positive narrative than a negative one i think that's the most important to help change the way you feel yeah you know it's um it's one of those things where you know you got to do this like it's it, i mean my mom would tell me this uh, anybody would tell you this right that this is obviously what you got to do like stop being negative about it what happened happened he lived a great life you didn't want him to suffer more like all of this it's there you know but it just it still just takes it takes time you know exactly so there's an entire process there's a five stages of grief you have to go yeah. through until acceptance comes you know and yeah. even that acceptance you could be bordering on between you know what they I mean say- I genuinely in my heart I feel like I've completely accepted it because um I was completely against even thinking of uh you, these kind of ways of putting dogs down or whatever it is i was i'm fully for this when is when it's his time and when his karma has been sorted or whatever you know is 101 reasons why he was here has been done he will go there's no chance he's not going to go at that point and who am i to dictate how long his life should be you know i was one of those thinkers but then as he got worse and worse and worse and you genuinely cannot see somebody you love like this suffer like this and especially a a pet that cannot communicate and cannot tell you how much they're suffering you can just see it you know it's literally like that and they're so strong even after all of that you might somebody would come in with say no no he doesn't look so bad but i know how bad he is and i understand how much he's suffering as his mom in that sense you know so um i just feel like i was there to make the right decisions i don't know right or wrong i'll never know but whatever decisions i made needed to happen at that point at least for me and my husband they needed to happen for hugo not for us So I feel like I've reached this. I I feel I don't know. I could be completely wrong, but I feel like I've fully accepted it. Right. It's just like one of those of time heals all wounds, and uh, I just think that it just fades as you go on month after month. Correct. And the pain will always be there. I mean, this year I forgot his birthday, and I was broken. It's yeah. just that I was so busy with the kids and just so busy with so many other things that I genuinely forgot his birthday. And my best friend reminded me. She's like, "Oh, it's you." And I was like, "I cannot believe I forgot Hugo's birthday." And I remembered it two days before. I knew it was coming. I knew the whole process for it, but actually, on that day, I just blanked from it, you know, completely. And it broke me. It broke me that I didn't know, like I couldn't remember this. Yeah. See, it, it will, it will, it will always be there at the back of your mind where you never truly forget losing a loved one. Yeah. There will be times it comes and goes. It will get better with time, uh, but you will always feel the pinch of some a pet that you love not being around. Right? That's Absolutely. That meant something to you, and that's only natural. If if it didn't pinch you at all, then that means that didn't matter to you as much. So it's it's natural for it to happen. It will just become, yeah. it will still gradually become less over a period of time because one has no option but to cope because life has to go on, and you cannot be miserable all your life. So mm-hmm. it does get better, but it does take time, and there is. there's no way to hasten the process which is why i said getting back to normal life and having normal routine yeah absolutely best thing to just move forward thank you thank you for all of this it's been great actually uh i believe that na sorry you had a prior engagement that's why you have to yeah right do you now, mind right? thank you yeah yeah thank you so much thank you thank you story. so much thank you and for taking the time off um unfortunately riddhi also had an emergency so she had to leave um so i i i probably share my story um even though um rufus passed away 15 years ago i uh, um his entire life from birth to the end there are these lovely lovely big memories it it doesn't go away the pain uh but now we are we now we're at the stage where my brother and i only think good memories and we remember him on his birth anniversary we don't think about his death that day or whatever at all um like i said i still feel that one day he just walk by it is just a very funny like a mind playing tricks on you but the 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 first your first pet my god that's just embedded 
But, but I remember when, when the, the day after we, we cremated him, the day after that silence, it was just deafening. And then, of course, yeah, you, you just, at the, you, uh, for me, it was just keep telling yourself, remember the good guy. He lived his entire life. He was too sick. We had to put him down. So you remember he had a full life. He had great, he, I, you remember all the good memories. You remember how he stole the, one, the half kg of um, butter cake from the table and polished it off. Then uh, one day he ate rat poison by mistake. Uh, that's a whole story. Yeah, the, we had a, a rat infestation in the building and our watchman decided to put rat poison on pieces of pow and put it all over the building. Lu, uh, Rufus managed to eat one. The watchman told us. So we had to run around. And that time in the 90s, you didn't have like emergency like vets and things that's like that. So I had to call um, had to go to the uh, chemist, get the antidote, get the injection. And I got my sixth floor cardiologist <laughs> to administer <laughs> his injection. And then he was fine. The next day, like he behaved like nothing happened. And we were like tearing and like how? And he's foaming yeah. at the mouth. So these are memories that we have. Yeah. So like I said, to everyone who's watching, it takes time. Just remember to be patient and it takes time. And also just be kind on yourself because you're not meant to overcome it easily. You're not meant to also suffer endlessly. So sometimes people feel guilty that they are moving on and they're not, um, you know, um, grieving long enough. I said, just be kind on yourself because whether you lose a pet or you lose a loved one, you have to move on in life. And sometimes um, you have so many people who are dependent on you, whether they're your parents or they're your children, and you can't, uh, you can't just halt life for anyone right. unfortunately so um, life has to move on even though one wishes that the circumstances were different um, and uh, it it just it takes its course and as long as you're trying a little bit every day I think that's perfectly fine yeah that's what's very important you have to try every single day yeah um, we have a few questions that are coming in live Deepa is asking what support is available for pet owners experiencing grief Honestly, I do not have a pet, so I do not know if there are pet support groups. <laughs> but uh, on online, yeah, on Facebook, definitely there are a whole bunch yeah. of them. So maybe uh, if you're part of a pet support group uh, online will be helpful. Uh, Brian DeMello is asking how uh, you. I think you you have answered this question. How can we explain the loss of a pet to children or family members? Like you said keep the keep the communication open yes. and make that up and make them a part of your process and let them correct i deal think the way they want to deal the way they want to i think again depending upon the age and the personality of your child um involve them in their capacity in the grieving process if your child of course resists and doesn't want to be it respect that don't force it upon them because every child is different some children may be young but they have a tremendous um, ability to want to deal with things and they are older they're more mature for their age and they would want to be a part of it so it's a, it's a very personal decision for every family but i will say do not shy away from explaining to your child whether it's a three-year-old or a 13 year old this is what is happening and so that they also understand and it's not just a sudden vacuum in their life right so communicate and ensure that there will be some fallout in behavior that you will notice right there is no uh there is no way around it um and so i suggest that just keep talking to them about it so that they are also aware of what to experience and what to expect to happen. Then Siddhi is asking, why do we form such strong emotional bonds with our pets? Why do we? Why do we? Yeah. <laughs> I, I guess, don't know how to answer that. I because guess because... Instant connection. See, I think that pets uh, have... I mean, at least the ones that, and again, don't have a pet, but I'm just generally uh, would think that especially pets like cats and dogs who like forming relationships with humans, right? Um, they're able to communicate emotionally. If there was an animal who could not communicate with you emotionally, you would not develop uh, an attachment with them, right? So which is why you have them for, you know, a dog or a cat and not for maybe, I don't know a lion or a cheetah <laughs> so the thing is that if you have pets and even for example horses animals are such sensitive creatures that those who are able to get along with humans and have that relationship with humans uh, you can't help but form an attachment to them 
right? And attachment is easy to develop to um, to creatures which give back to you emotionally. Um, yeah. And uh, all human beings need emotional connection. There is no human being who doesn't need emotional connection. So as a result, when you find another creature which is able to deal with you and connect with you emotionally, it's only natural to develop that relationship with them. And if you are somebody who likes animals, you develop it more versus somebody less who is not so into animals. But um, if there is somebody who is emotionally reciprocating or meeting an emotional need of yours, uh, you will form a relationship with them. That's a good one. Um, Vinita is asking, how can we focus on the positive memories with our pets in, which help in healing? How can we focus on the positive? Yeah. How can, uh, sorry, sorry. How can focusing on the positive memories with our pet help in healing? Like I was saying that the healing process also involves uh, you not feeling so low in the grief scale, right? Now, like I said, grief is a year's process. It will take you, it gets better with time. But with anything in life, you need to try to move on in that grief process. And for you to try, if you're going to only hold on to the negative thoughts and the negative memories, the grief will only be prolonged. Because like I said, life has to move on. And if you're going to move on by thinking about only the negative, life will seem like a struggle. So in order to be able to move on uh, in a healthier way, in a healthier coping way, it is important to think about the positive memories you've had with your pet because uh, whilst you have no choice but to move on, it's much better to move on with, with positive coping uh, strategies than with negative ones. And remember that holding on to those negative emotions over a period of time escalate and overflow into other aspects of your life. So if you are feeling low and if you are feeling constantly negative, negative because you're not letting go of the loss over a period of time you will also not want to interact with people socially you'll be less interested in work in office you'll be less involved with your children you'll be less involved in eating it has a it has a full cyclical effect on your own personal health and that serves no purpose in the long run to anyone because coping needs to be done you need to move forward in life and the only way to do it is to be able to use positive coping strategies then Jenny and Mira asks are asking similar questions. How can uh, sorry sorry Jenny and yeah Jenny is asking are there any warning signs that indicate when someone may need professional help to cope with pet loss? And Mira is also asking the same question. What are some signs that someone may need extra support after losing a pet? Right. So human nature is to be able is to want to try and heal yourself on your own. Right. Um, and when you feel that you are unable to do that on your own is when you reach out to your closest friends and family um, and you reach out and you um, you ask uh, for somebody to come and help and intervene and talk to you about what's happening. And uh, you try and reach out to other people first. The, the point at which you have to <coughs> sorry reach a professional is when you can no longer help yourself or when reaching out and talking to people around you is no longer enough because everybody will react <coughs> very emotionally to what you're going through. But <coughs> sorry. sometimes they're not enough. You just want somebody to give you a third person perspective to tell you that what has happened is fine. You will overcome it. Do X, Y, Z things, which other people cannot because they're also emotionally vested in you. So if you're going to your mother, if you're going to your sister, they're also in their way grieving and they're also feeling bad for you. Even if they're your friends, they're not able to, you, you're not meeting somebody who's not emotionally attached to you. So when you are unable to help yourself and people around you are unable to help you as well is one indicator. The second one is, that you are allowed to feel sad and upset and low. But if you feel it's become a consistent phenomena, it's been a couple of weeks you're feeling it, right? It's affecting sleep, it's affecting appetite. It's affecting mood on a regular basis. That's the time to reach out to a professional. <clears throat> so we're coming to the end of the session. We have just one last question. What advice you'd like to give people mourning their pets? Just I know, like general takeaways. I think general takeaways, one, it's natural to experience what you are. 
it doesn't don't listen to people who say okay you know what is only a pet you know why are you continuing this way uh, you know snap out of it it doesn't matter move on with life so one is grief is a very individual phenomena it's all right to experience what you are it's important though to communicate what you're feeling and not keep it within you uh, it's important to try and get back to regular routine whatever that might mean to you at that point in time but coming back to regular routine is what is important i think if there are support groups you can reach out to there's nothing like it rely on friends and family at that point of time to help you through the process uh, realize it will take time to overcome it and if you've not gotten back to where you thought you would be in a month or a few weeks there's nothing wrong in that um i will say that remember if you have children to communicate and in- involve them in the process in their capacity um and recognize that at the end of the day if you can develop an ability to just focus on the positives of having the pet um that will and you'll cherish your memories and you'll cherish your time with them along with being able to do other things in your life without feeling sad or you know, without feeling guilty and without feeling miserable so try and make routines for yourself thinking about them positively and remembering them um but trying to develop more healthier coping strategies and reaching out to a professional if you are really really struggling that sounds really good um thank you so much tara for today and taking the time out this was a lovely session and um, it's it's given me new perspective and it's also given me a it's very difficult to explain to a lot of people what this feels like and now this now 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 knowing everything at least it's easier now to explain so thank you so much for taking the time out today my pleasure thank you so much